The next condition category we're going to talk about is fragile skin. Now, like all of the others, fragile skin has a very wide range of origin, and the treatments are all the same. Uh, the treatments are uh, finding out where the most fragile areas of the foot and ankle are and being careful that the design of the upper doesn't impinge on those. And also uh, creating a style that uh, can open right up so this, the foot can be placed in. So the foot doesn't have to slide in and have a pass line. Many of the origins of, flat, of fragile skin are things like diabetes. Diabetes can affect the circulation terribly so that the skin is, uh, is unnourished, that, that it's, not getting, uh, it's, pro it's not being looked after by the circulation. Uh, and so it can become very prone to ulceration. Also, with diabetes, the uh, lymphocytes are very weak and, and very few in number, so the skin is not protected by, uh, by the immune system. Uh, also with diabetes, certain hard tissues like callus and nails uh, get uh, the, it's called glycostylation, where glucose molecules, due to the imbalance of the uh, sugar uh, system, uh, attach themselves to the skin and, and create pockets of very hard, very brittle skin, uh, which um, can then damage the rest of the skin by acting almost as if it's like a foreign object. Um, there are the uh, overuse of steroids. Steroids can be used to deal with rheumatoid disease and, and uh, other conditions, uh, asthma, severe asthma, which over a long time, uh, the steroids make the skin very, very fragile and soft. And uh, so that the amount of, basically the problem is the amount of pressure required to hold the shoe on is greater than the skin can take. And so the act of walking or the act of keeping the shoe on whilst walking provides or makes a friction or a pressure on the skin so that it breaks open and shears. Uh, another category and the most severe form of fragile skin is epidermolosis bullosa, which is EB, uh, which has three forms. Uh, the most, uh, the simplex uh, is uh, much easier to deal with, um, the skin isn't quite as fragile, um, and you f follow you know, the very simple rules in terms of no seams and soft materials. You can uh, make shoes for people with that condition. Usually they can get away with um, uh, proprietary trainers, and most of them that's the ideal solution. For dystrophic EB, where the congenital uh, makeup of the actual skin itself means that the epidermis and the dermis can shear with the, the slightest pressure, and the dermis breaks away from the epidermis, and then when it reforms, it leaves a scar, which is permanent, and um, gradually as the uh, time goes on, if it's not the feet and ankles aren't cared for well by footwear, the, the, uh, the, the um, damage builds up and builds up until it can be terminal. This is a, a, a last for a child with dystrophic EB, and you'll notice the very, very round shape. That isn't caused by the disease, that is caused by the bandages. The foot is so fragile that it is completely covered in bandages. And uh, so um, I didn't actually measure the foot. I measured the bandages within the sock, and which gives this very, very round shape. This is a shoe we made for somebody with dystrophic EB. You see it's uh, lined with very soft fleece. The fleece is not only soft, but it wicks away any moisture and keeps the, the skin relatively dry. And um, it's coming out through the bandaging. Be, we have to be aware that with fragile skin in the feet, then the fragile skin is also going to be in the hands and, the, uh, and in the fingers. And so we've got, you know, very simple uh, Velcro straps. We're not relying on laces. And you see if those vel three Velcros are open, the tongue folds down. You can just put the foot in and then put the tongue back on and then shape the foot again. 
This is an example of steroid damage in quinotalopes, a kind of a club foot that's in a much older woman. And you can see from the amount of bandaging, you can see the distorted shape. But the, the skin has become so fragile that the bandages are permanent. In this case, there's a lot more to be done. This is a, a third degree deformity as well. And so one solution for that and, and, and indeed for many uh, fragile skin, is to carefully get a cast of the foot. So here's the cast of the foot, it's in plaster of Paris. And then we take some very soft Shore 20 EVA, 12 mil thick, heat it up to 120 degrees and press it in a vacuum former and leave it to cool. And then it takes the exact shape of the cast, therefore the exact shape of the foot. We can then grind that until the, it becomes a, an orthotic device. And it's called a full contact insole. So because it's made to the cast of the foot, no part of the foot is carrying any more weight than any other part. And therefore, the minimum weight bearing per square centimeter, if you like, is achieved by having the weight evenly distributed. Um, we can cover this then in a soft material. This is ideal lining material for people with fragile skin. It's a, a heavy chamois, similar to what you do your car with, only it's a finished, it's not a suede sh chamois. And it's quite strong, it's very strong, you know, uh, but, but it's got all that softness. Uh, and it's very kind to feet, there's nothing in the tannage that would damage the feet. Uh, Another thing that we would want to do is around the collar uh, to prevent any stones getting in. You know how every once in a while, just in the normal walking around in daily life, um, a stone will get in your shoe. You know immediately it's in there, you take it out, no damage done. By the time that happens with fragile skin, there could be a lot of damage done. So one thing is we can take this neoprene foam, cut into a strip and shape it, and wrap it with a soft material, and that forms a cushion quarter that um, goes around. And without damaging the skin, it holds it very, very close. So any stones are not going to be able to enter in there. This is another very useful material for fragile skin. You see how the salmon color on the top is about Shore 10. It's very, very soft. Whereas the blue uh, color underneath uh, is about Shore 20. So when you walk on it, the Shore 10 presses into the firmer material. If it was just the, shore, the salmon color, it would bottom out. But what it is, the softer one bottoms out into the firmer one and creates a very, uh, really ideal surface, uh, particularly if it's got something soft on it, real ideal surface for fragile skin. So this, the strategy is to use very good lining leather, soft, no chrome, and then also to have a sheepskin. This is a shearing. Again, th it's the bounce between the actual leather itself, the, f the fine fibers of the sheepskin are wicking away the moisture, keeping the foot warm, and also keeping it soft. Again, the uh, leathers, the upper leathers have to be soft. This is a drummed uh, softy calf. Um, there's other softer leathers than this, such as the suede kids. Anything that is made to be very, very soft, but at the same time to be aware that it, uh, it's got to hold the foot. You don't want the foot sliding around. So even though um, the, the skin's fragile, you again, like the, uh, like the inner sole, you want to be able to distribute the, the weight bearing of the upper evenly. So no one part is taking it uh, more than the other. And that's why, in this case, even though that's a tiny shoe. We have three Velcro straps. And so the solution is to distribute the weight bearing underneath, around it, and uh, having uh, materials like this that can uh, ease the, um, the load. So no one part of the shoe is carrying any more weight than the other and having a cushion collar to prevent stones. And the last thing I want to point out is the soles. So this is a children's shoe. The child would be in an environment where there are other children with fragile skin. And so the sole 
is round and soft, so the edges are very, very smooth. So if the, the child walks and goes by and clips his ankle with the shoe, it's not going to cause damage, as a sharper, firmer sole would do. If he uh, if the, drops the shoe, it might be one of the hardest things around for him, the sole of that shoe. If it somehow falls and hits his foot or hits his leg, it's not going to hurt him. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a really, really critical thing. Um, and also, it's got enough of a rim around. It's not a welt, it's a rounded rim that if he hits a, a wall or a, a stone or something, that the sole is protecting him. So the sole is soft, flexible, smooth, and rounded, yet it's still protecting him from stones underneath and protecting him from stones sideways. So those are my recommendations for dealing with uh, fragile skin.